Okay, so you want to learn <clears throat> chip designing, IC designing, okay? Um, but question is first, what a chip is going to do? I mean, we all know what it, what it does. We have chips in all kind of electronic system out there. And, uh, but what is inside the chip? What are the key components there? And when you want to learn chip designing, what is it that you want to learn? Which area you want to be a master of or you want to get a deeper into? Okay, so if you let's start with um, some systems. Okay, in real life, you have a chip. Okay, that is doing some actions, and this chip is what happens is on the input side, there are some, there are sensors. Okay, they are sensing or humans are giving commands or these are taking commands from the environment. Okay, then these sensors send the data to the chip. Chip is going to process that and is going to make some intelligent decisions. Okay, and based on those decisions, it's going to output some signals to, I don't know how to describe this, to something. And these signals are going to create some actions. And maybe another device that is connected to the output is going to perform some action based on, on this one. Okay, so chip in a way is a device that transform information processes information then based on the information it makes some decisions okay and then those decisions are transformed into action based on some external devices so even this one is an external device this one is external device okay but this is sensor, this is more like, I don't know, action, whatever you can call it. Okay, so in real world, all the signals are available in analog format. Okay, analog, for example, your voice. Your voice can get a very high amplitude, can get very low amplitude, right? Uh, if you are sensing that signal as voltage, it can go up and can go down. It can go anywhere like a sound waves can be like that. OK, when you um, transform sound waves into some sort of a voltage signal or a current signal, there will be variation on that. OK, but these chips, OK, generally predominantly, they will uh, process uh, digital information. Okay, so what is digital? So as I said, let's pick a different color. So this is analog. Okay, then somewhere here we need to convert analog to digital. So it's known as A to D, ADC, analog to digital conversion. Similarly, when this thing ultimately um, is going to need some analog information, so there has to be a digital to analog at the output. Okay, in the within the chip, okay, the massive process information processing, comparison or decision making is purely on digital. And digital means, okay, it's one or it's zero. It's one or zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one, zero, like that. Uh, and analog is really a very large number of uh, distinct points. In the digital, you have two points. You have a high voltage, you have a low voltage. Okay, so high voltage is um, one, low voltage is zero okay the beauty of this one zero is it's all one zero 
1010. But the way the whole point of this uh, digitization is that, for example, if you want to send information, um, okay, let's say you are at, uh, you're on one side of a river, we have mountains here, another side, some mountains here, okay, water is flowing here, okay, you want, you have, there is somebody over here, or someone here, you want to send some signals to this person, and there is no other way. This person cannot see this person, so or cannot hear that person, they cannot hear each other. So there is no way that uh, you can just say it, okay? So you have to communicate through some sort of hand signals. So let's say this person has some light bulbs and say, okay, uh, two light bulbs, okay? So this person and this person, they have already together communicated that, okay, when both are off, means zero, zero, it means don't worry. When both mean, both are one, this is a sign of danger, something dangerous is coming from somewhere. And when it's left side is off, the right side bulb is on, it means something else, maybe uh, go do a particular job and it's one zero maybe do another particular job so just using different combination of on and off this person is able to set uh, send a four set of information pieces okay in this way if you have more balls you can send a lot more information right when there are three, you have a lot more combination of three. When there are four, a lot more combination. So think of this um, chip uh, is the same thing. This chip um, can transform this uh, digital pattern that are coming in a lot of internal uh, transformations and using those internal and other, some more internal, some more internal, and together, when the final stage comes, it can really process that information and send that. So it can do some real-time work uh, on that inp input information. Okay, so that is the concept of analog and digital. Okay, and the, comp uh, and the concept of digital information. Now, next thing is, okay, this chip has uh, what are the key components? And we all know that it's a transistor. Okay, and in in a very simple form, this transistor is. Oh, let me delete that. This transistor is, which is typically, um, we denote that by. I should say, oops, let's say, we'll talk about what kind of two type of transistor, but let's say this is transistor. Transistor is like a switch. So maybe forget about that for a while. It's a switch. You can turn it on. Okay, when it's on, current is flowing through it. And when it is off, right, opposition, current is not flowing through it. So these are the two states. Okay, so all these are transistor and the interconnection of those transistor. Combination of transistor in different topologies that are working together to process that information on, off, on, off, on, on, off, off, on, off, on, off, and all that type of stuff, okay. Then these internally transistors, okay, these chips, some of the modern chips can have billions of transistors, okay. There is no way we can 
uh, work on individual transistor here. Okay, so what do we do? So we have we define different hierarchies in the design. Okay, so instead of sitting at the transistor level, what we do is let's combine certain um, transistor and call them some gates. And each gate has a unique property. Okay, let's think about that. So, so if you have input, let's say there is an input to, and there is a B input, and there is an output. When A and B, and there's out. When A is zero, B is zero, output is zero. When A is zero, B is one, output is zero. When A is one, B is zero. There are two outputs, so these are the only combination, right? You can zero, zero, you can have one of them zero or one, and you can have both one. So only four possibilities, okay? So that means um, in this property, Look at that output. We can see that when one of the inputs is zero, output is zero. And output is one only when both inputs are one. So this is a, a device that can create this output and it has that unique property. And it turns out we call this device or this sort of output, um, this sort of behavior of a device that is one means output is high when both inputs are high, otherwise it's zero, okay? This is called AND, right? What are other ways we can combine the two A and B and generate a unique output? Let's look another one. zero zero uh, again the same combinations and this time this device has a unique thing when either of the input is one output is one so in this case output is one in this case this is one so output one in this case both are one but in this case neither is one so output is zero okay so this is opposite to the to this one all right so this unique behavior, we call it or, and we, we just, I mean, there are symbols for everything. These symbols make it easy to represent that, to express that information. For example, if I, every time I have to draw this table and tell you, it's going to be very difficult. So whenever I put an AND gate, like A, B comes and AND is this, you will understand, okay, what I really means, right? And similarly, this one, whenever A, B, I put an R gate, you will understand that, right? Okay, let's look at some other, and these are really the basic component. We're just combining two inputs. For example, you can also have a three input AND gate, four input AND gate. Uh, you can have six input AND gate, right? You can make and combine, as long as we say, one of the input is zero, output is zero, and when all the inputs are one, output is one. So in a way that we have determined a unique state of output based on combinations of input. Similarly, an R gate can be with multiple inputs, not just two inputs. Okay, um, what are some other ones? Let's look into another one. We can also do is an, an uh, Let's say it's, uh, I'm sorry. We have just input and output. When input becomes zero, output one, when input one, zero. Just like we are inverting. Like zero to one, one to zero. Okay. So this, this sort of behavior is called inverter. Just put this in. Okay, other combination, 
I'm looking for a basic combination. Another combination we can do with A, B, and output is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, which means, and this particular one is whenever one is zero, the other one is one, this one goes one. Look, this is zero, this is one. In this one, this is one, this is zero. The inputs are opposite and this one else has become zero. Right, so this is another uh, interesting way of transforming the information and this time is called exclusive R. Okay, and all these are called gates, basic gates. So what happens is this entire chip is a combination of these and or exclusive or inverter. These are connected in a different combination. Now, how we determine it's an and, an or, 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 an and, that really depends how we want to transform the information. And we will study that. We will take some simpler example. My plan is not to go into too much detail, but enough that the concepts are clear for you. It's very important that those fundamental things are clear. And if you don't understand those fundamental things, then the high level knowledge is not going to be solid. Okay. So today's lesson was, okay, chip, analog, digital, why we need digital, what is in the core digital, the transistor, and then we uh, don't talk about just transistor, we talk about combination of transistor, and, and these AND gates can be made with certain number of transistor, this behavior, similarly R, similarly exclusive R, and inverter, okay? And there is a next state that, okay, now we combine these gates, and make some more, uh, some complex um, circuits. And again, job of those circuit is to generate a new set of information or process information in a predictable way, the way we want. So today, this is enough for this video, and we will um, look further into it, uh, in, into the chip design components. All right, see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.